And we are live. Thank you, everyone. I am David Mullings. Welcome to Island Forward in partnership with Jamaicans.com. Every Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern here in the U.S. Joining me from wherever you are, just put it in the comments. Let me know where you're joining us from. Uh, today, we're streaming on LinkedIn for the first time. I got approval just this morning. So we're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and I have behind the scenes actually on Instagram here. So if you want to see the behind the scenes of the show, you can check me out on Instagram. I can I can't pull in those comments onto here. And, and unfortunately, the Instagram people don't get the cool layout that you guys get to see, whether we have guests or I play videos. Uh, today we're not going to have any guests. We're going to spend an hour talking about what makes us proud to be Jamaicans. And if you're not Jamaican, what do you love about Jamaica? So I'm looking forward to the, the comments, the questions. But guys, share where you're tuning in from. I want to big up your country, big up your city, big up your high school, whatever you want to big up. Big it up. Let's drop it in the comments. Okay, we already have Denver, Colorado is in the house. <laughs> Yo, big up, boss. There is a big driver. This is a big driver. So we got Denver, Colorado in the house. Respect, respect. Come in, guys. You, you want to get a shout out. Suppose we're proud. Yeah, talk about where you come from in Jamaica. How about that? Too? So look at Kian McCullough. Jumping in from LinkedIn, he's in California, he's in the house. All right, let's see where else we got people showing up on Instagram. Let me tell me where you are. I need to give you a shout out, man. Kingston, Jamaica, in the house. Turn up, turn up. Welcome, Rochelle. What's your Jason Walker bigging up Woolmouth Boys School? <laughs> I love it, man. Go all the way back to them. To, whoa, whoa, we got Qatar or Qatar, as we should really be pronouncing it. This is amazing. Stephanie, thank you for joining me. This is wow. Of course, Jaldir is saying big up Campion Massive. We, we went to, to Campion. I got Leanne jumping in on, on Instagram. She's in Jamaica. More Jamaica people. So big up, big up. Shakir is the driver. The man said Jaldir is the older, wiser brother. I bet he can play football better too. <laughs> I love this. I love this. So guys, I'm going to start with a video because this was important. See, greetings. What's your London in the house? Man, it's, it's evening time now. I'm interrupting dinner. I see Shani Bennett. Oh, man, you in Santiago, Chile. Big up. Love the work that you're doing with your company as well. You guys will learn more about his company one day. I'll get him on the show. So I posted that video. Oh, gosh, look here. Big up. Edwin Allen High in Frankfield, Clarendon. My mom is from Spalings Clarendon, went to Frankfield High, which is now Edwin Allen. So especially a big shout out to Edwin Allen. Look here, Robert is in California. We've got Port St. Lucie, Florida from Steve. I say, oh gosh, my friend Marlon saying just large up. We're getting people coming in from LinkedIn as well. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. So you know, Jamaica's independence recently passed, 58 years strong. And I, I did a video, a Jamaica Facts video that we wanted to post online and just really remind people of what I see and why I'm so proud of Jamaica. But sharing some facts that, that fewer people would know. And so this has done really well. And when I said done really well, I'm going to show you. On LinkedIn, is over 11,000 views, tons of comments, 91 reshares on Facebook, 55,000 views on the company page. But let's pick up some more places. Toronto, Canada, in the house. That's a family in Toronto, Canada. Veronica is in Cleveland, Ohio. Look at this. We've got some, some LeBron James people popping in. Oh, gosh, man. Where's Moby? Moby. That's where that is from. So we have to especially big up Montego Bay. Big up Montego Bay. Orlando, right here where I live, via Kingston. And bigging up Holy Trinity High School. I love this. <laughs> it just put it in one thing. Everything get big up. Orlando, the new home. Kingston, the original home. Holy Trinity. Yeah, man. Bigging up the school. Bigging up the schools. So everybody out here, we're getting Silent Hill Jamaica is in here and I'm watching on YouTube. You know, first comment I've gotten from YouTube and, and that's how late it is in, in London. So thank you for tuning in. I'm going to make this worth your while. We're going to have fun for the next hour. I'm going to play this video. But by the way, I dress this way because obviously it's, it's Jamaica. But you guys can notice this on, on the stream, on LinkedIn. Yeah, you guys are about to see it. But on Instagram, they can see it. I'll show you. So... I've actually never worn this jer jersey before, right? Because this jersey is autographed. This is the Reggae Boys 98 World Cup jersey. When Jamaica became the first English speaking country in the Caribbean to qualify for the World Cup, France 98. I played football for Real Mona at the time, and, and my physiotherapist was the physiotherapist for the team. And she took the jersey and got it signed by every single player 
of the Reggae Boys team, including the coach Rene Simois and the Reggae and the Reggae Boys physiotherapist team. So I don't wear this jersey; it sits in the closet. It's hidden. I decided to put it on just for this show, and there, there are more signatures on the back. And then the jersey behind me is the Reggae Girls jersey signed by the entire Reggae Girls team that qualified again for the World Cup. First English-speaking Caribbean team. Uh, I think it's actually the first Caribbean team to qualify for a Women's World Cup. So big up to the girls, big up to my friend Sophia Harris who coordinated that for me. Uh, the entire team signed that, including the JFF executives and the coaching staff. So uh, hanging on to these things, you know, these are my little special treats. I can't wait to frame them and put them up somewhere. But yeah, man, Rochelle, nice, nice. Can't wear this. I don't want to wash it. I don't, right? I don't want to sweat it. I don't want to have to have the the logos, you know, come out like it. So big up Moby. Again, we got some Moby. Brooklyn in the house. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. Original Jamaica, that. I mean, right? Flatbush people, too. Look at this. That's my former school. I also taught there. Great. Now we need to play the video. And then I'm going to play two other videos for you. But this is a Jamaica Facts video that got so many people sending me messages. A friend of mine sent me a screenshot yesterday of his mom posted the video in the family WhatsApp chat. And he said, David, this is how you know your boss. <laughs> so I'm, I'm laughing at that. But yeah, man, I'm going to frame the jerseys. They're all going to be framed. Going... Actually, I don't want to just frame them. I want to put them on a, on a mannequin because there are, there are logos, there are signatures on the back. So if I just frame it, you'd miss all the, the signatures on the back of the jersey. But Let's play the video and see what, what caused so many people to want to talk about how proud we are as Jamaicans. But we have a big up London first, because we have more London in the house. Big up, Carl. So, video time. Like many Jamaicans, I'm proud to be a Jamaican. And today, I want to share just a few Jamaican facts with you about our special place in the world. Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee is one of the most sought after and most expensive coffees in the world. But did you know that Sea Island cotton is also one of the most expensive and one of the finest cottons in the world? Glistening Waters in Falmouth is one of only four locations in the entire world where you can witness bioluminescence. The last two habitats in the Western Hemisphere for the largest butterfly, the giant swallowtail, are in Jamaica the cockpit country, and the Blue and Jonker Mountains National Park. Jamaica has the most sub-10 second runs in the 100 meters, mostly thanks to Asafa Powell and Usain Bolt. Jamaica was the first tropical country to enter the Winter Olympics, inspiring the famous Disney movie, Cool Runnings. Yes, Jamaica have a bobsled team. Ian Fleming wrote all of his James Bond books in Jamaica. And Dr. No, the first Bond film, was shot in Jamaica. Live and Let Die had scenes in Jamaica. And No Time to Die, the most recent Bond movie, was also filmed in Jamaica. Looking back at history, in the 1600s, Port Royal and Boston were the two largest English towns in the Western Hemisphere and the most economical important. Black River received electricity for the entire town just 11 years after Thomas Edison lit up Lower Manhattan. Jamaica was the first commercial producer of bananas in the Western Hemisphere. And the last one, one of the oldest golf clubs in the Western Hemisphere was founded in Jamaica. The Manchester Golf Club was founded eight years before the Royal Montreal Club in Canada. So guys, that is the video that blew up, right? And, and I expected, I'll be honest, I did expect Jamaicans to share it and feel proud. I didn't expect it to take off the way it did. Uh, but uh, thank you very much to my mentor, Michael Leachin, who uh, that morning when I sent it to him, said that he didn't know some of those facts. And so he was going to distribute it for me on on WhatsApp, which then totally exploded. So uh, really appreciate that. Well, let me see. Let me see what comments came in while we're doing that. Look at that. We got we got Knox College in Spalins again. Man, mom going to love hearing this stuff, man. This is this is mom's area. Atlanta, obviously the ATL. We can't talk about Jamaicans and not talk about ATL. That, that's a big place. Where, where are my Jamaicans in South Florida? Kingston 21, Miami, Pembroke Pines, Miramar. Where are you guys? 
Hey, Marlene. I see you, Marlene. How are you? Of course. <laughs> Venice just dropped Jamaica flags everywhere because she's so proud. You know, we say we just run out and, and wave flag and thing. So I, I have two videos I want to play for you. Uh, one of them is going to be a reminder about the James Bond that we just mentioned in there, No Time to Die. Uh, they actually had put up a video of some behind the scenes on set in Jamaica with Bond 25. So I'm going to pull up that video and let's pull it in and play this for you. Some of you might not have seen this video. So let's see why Jamaica has been and always will be. So that is what uh, the No Time to Die had put together to showcase what they filmed in Jamaica. I cannot wait for that movie to come out. As you know, it's late. But man, that, that movie is going to really remind people of how Bond started with Dr. No in Jamaica. Right? That's where the first film uh, was done. And all the books, as I said in the video, and I keep saying, have been written. So this is going to be exciting. But, you know, we're here. We're proud to be Jamaican. More Atlanta in the building. We're just going to have to keep bigging up ATL. And, and you guys are probably going to just bombard us now with, with the ATL stuff. I surprise Miami not in here as yet. But here's one that I'm going to do. We tend to do something like play the national anthem. We, we saw that with Beanie Man versus Bounty Killer with the Versus. We know we Jamaicans are especially proud of that anthem. Why not going to play that? We had our national pledge that we grew up saying at school pretty much every morning, and, and I do appreciate those words. But there is something else that I actually think of more when I think of Jamaica. I'm going to play it for you, and I want you to let me know if this is a song that, that comes to mind as well when you think about Jamaica. I see Sham in the building. I'm going to big up Sham. But here is Jamaica's national song. We have a national song, guys. So I see everybody say, man, I can feel it right now. I have goosebumps. <laughs> I just got goosebumps. I literally got goosebumps. And, and that's what happens when Jamaicans hear the national anthem or hear that song played. Look here. So, so she's, he's agreeing. Kian is agreeing with, with, with Jaldir, who said, you know, he, he made it clear. By the way, the national song is one of the most beautiful songs, in my opinion. I think that's a very valid opinion. I think Jamaicans anywhere, anybody of Jamaican heritage in the world that hears that song swells with pride. Those words mean so much to us. And we, we do our best to, to live up to that. Right? I, I see my cousin, uh, Monique, popping into Instagram and saying, hi, hi, man. Uh, my, my niece had, had her birthday recently. So we got this born in a St. Andrews, Jamaica. Big up, Polly. Let, let's see. Oh, geez. Uh, let's let's see. Um, somebody said they remember it differently. That's interesting. <laughs> differently, uh, Jamaica everywhere. Jamaica everywhere. 
And then, you know, we, we're looking at this one, Marlon saying that, you know, he, he loves the song, always good, he always have me good chills, right? He gets chills listening to it, and, and, and that's how I am too. So, you know, proud Jamaican St. Andrew will come from, live in New York. So we have more New York people in here. Jamaica are all o- Jamaicans everywhere. We're all over the place. And, and wherever we go, people know that we're there. That, that's just the way it is. We come, and it's not that we're loud, right? But we, we, we come here with a... An idea of excellence wherever we go. Anywhere in the world we go, we go with this idea of wanting to achieve you know, whatever it is we set out for. And, and the bar isn't too high for us. We're going to keep going for higher bars. I think it's important for us to make sure we have that same attitude at home in Jamaica. Right? We are so proud of the fact that we have so many sprinters that come from Jamaica, male and female, fastest mo- woman in the world. You know, fastest man in the world at this point in time. Uh, we don't see that being broken anytime soon. But we also need to end up being proud of our economy, proud of our GDP growth, proud of our political leaders, proud of our, our country overall. We need excellence, uh, the way we look at it in sports, to be the same thing in business. Uh, we're already great when it comes to our music, right? reggae music, dance our music. We discussed that two weeks ago with Steve Wilson, the manager of Sean Paul. And so that's what we need to be really focusing in my opinion and i think part of it is that you know, we've seen negative trends in jamaica for for, for 30 years you know, more than a generation and there are people who no longer believe that it is possible we have forgotten our history we have forgotten our place in the world we've forgotten our contributions to global culture and if more jamaicans everywhere can remember what jamaica used to represent as a part of, of the British Empire and, and how important we were, we can get back to that, but not as part of somebody's empire, as part of somebody within what we are doing. So it is exciting uh, to see where that goes. And uh, let, let's see, let's let's go from there. So I've seen some some big up Jamaica. And uh, this is uh, some interesting comments on, on, on Instagram, people popping in and saying hi and so on. So this is exciting. <laughs> look at this one Belvedere Portland well, big it up Belvedere Portland so I'm excited I, I'm excited about that We look at this so, so I like that Jalier bring, this, bring up this one right simply saying that we influence the global civil rights movement and that's true when you think about Harry Belafonte right and you go back to Marcus Garvey his birthday just passed Marcus Garvey is one of Jamaica's national heroes Marcus Garvey started that whole black liberation movement and he came to the United States and he helped to found that civil rights movement here. He influenced people like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and the way they they thought. But you look at Harry Belafonte, who was integral in endorsing John F. Kennedy's campaign. JFK needed the black vote here in the United States for the Democratic Party. And they approached uh, Harry Belafonte. And Harry Belafonte, after sitting with him uh, to understand where JFK was and then explaining uh, the issues for black people in the United States in, ended up endorsing JFK, which helped him to win that election. So we need to be mindful of how Jamaicans have been so integral uh, to that movement to empower black people. But then obviously, uh, Jalier brings up apartheid in South Africa. Jamaica was one of the first two countries uh, to stand up and say that we're not going to do business uh, with a racist regime uh, that treats black people as subhuman and and led that way, right? You, you, if you watch the documentary Rebel Music, which talks about you know, Bob Marley's music, uh, that music was going into countries like Rhodesia, which became Zimbabwe, you know, South Africa as well. And they would take razor blades and actually slice the records, the LPs, so that they wouldn't play properly because that music was the music of black liberation, right? They, they play this music in the bushes while they were fighting against racism and oppression. So uh, look at this one. We, we obviously in Talawa, Portland, Portland. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, thank you, the USA, for the opportunity to still represent where I was born. Right. And so <laughs> talking about carnival. Uh, and so, you know, I'm not sure. South African flag now looks like it has a piece of the Jamaican flag in it. It might have been inspired by the Jamaican flag and colors. Uh, we need to ask somebody about that one. I won't go so far to put Jamaica in everything. I think we Jamaicans see Jamaica in, in many things, but uh, there's no question if you talk to people in South Africa or in, in Africa in general, that they haven't been influenced by reggae music. Jimmy Cliff, Bob Marley, Marcia Griffiths, Judy Moore. These p- 
people have done music that has inspired people globally, right? When the Berlin Wall fell, they were playing Bob Marley. When the Berlin Wall fell, these guys were singing Bob Marley. And when you had the issues we talked about in, in, in Tenement Square, they were doing the same thing. They were marching and singing Bob Marley. That is the power of Jamaican culture. And this is stuff that was made in Jamaica, usually by some of the poorest Jamaicans. In fact, the ones who were shunned, right? People with dreadlocks, people smoking ganja. And, and the upper classes looked down on them. I thought of it as Bugo Yaga music. Yeah, but that was the music that the world knows us for. And that was the music that put us on the map. And I love it. Michelle says, we are woven into the fabric of the world. And that is 100% true. Look at, oh gosh, so so Pauline is saying, I'm Pauline Ryan Marley. Robert Nesta Marley is my dad. <laughs> big up, big up. We have a Marley in the building. Of course, Mr. Wilson wants to happily put this one in there. But if you watch the Get Down on Netflix, or if you've paid attention to anything in the hip-hop world that talks about how hip-hop was founded, you know this one. DJ Cool Herc came from Jamaica, came into the Bronx, came into New York. And based on what we used to do in Jamaica, which was the dance hall, right? We had a sound system and we would, we would mix music. He started hip-hop. He helped to start hip-hop. A Jamaican DJ comes up and says, we're going to do what we do in Jamaica, the way we mix these records. And of course, uh, Grandmaster Flash and these other guys then come in and talk about the break. And we end up getting toasting, right? Jamaicans used to do toasting. Big up Uroy. Uroy is who we need to give credit to. Uroy was a guy that was toasting. He's the biggest toaster known out of Jamaica. Toasting was let's play the rhythm, which came from the United States, and then toast, do your own music over it, which came to the United States. They call it rapping. They rapped over the break, right? The best part of the song. And that's why we're cousins. Hip-hop and dancehall are, are close cousins because they spawned out of the same kind of culture and environment of providing a party vibe a place for for us as black people to enjoy ourselves and, and credit must be given where it is due and and so that's why i love that it's called island def jam now right it's island records founded by chris blackwell which gave us bob marley and then you're going to have def jam which is you know russell simmons and rick rubin run dmc guys so Island Def Jam is, is one company. Mara Carey is signed to her. Rihanna is signed to her. So we should always remember what we have contributed to the world and then do more than that. that that's why I want to do this show. And that's why Blue Moho Capital is investing back into Jamaica and in the wider Caribbean. You know, our sense saying, you know, talk truth. I remember when the music by Rasta in my house when we were growing up. I love it. I love it. I, I grew up in a house that played all of these songs, right? And especially we played Baron Lee and the Dragoneers. We played Bob Marley. We didn't just play reggae music. We played reggae. We played some dancehall. But as always, some parents have issues with some of the songs in dancehall. Uh, but we, we, we grew up hearing the scatterlights, right? We, we hear Toots and the Matos. Right? Mom and Dad played you know, rock steady for us so that we could understand the history of Jamaican music. Yes, a little mental, but not really mental, but rock steady, scare reggae music, dance or music. That's what I grew up hearing with, with actual turntables. At Jamaica, we say, bless, I love it, I love it. I mean, you guys, tell, tell me some stuff that you remember. What else makes you proud of being Jamaican? Because I, I could drop some more facts for you, which I do have an actual part two video that's coming out, but tell me some things that, that make you proud. Look at that, you, you right, <laughs> you at Beckford, big up, but you tell me some things that make you proud of being a, uh, being Jamaican. And and why not share even some of your vision for where you could see uh, Jamaica going in the future? If if you could wave a magic wand, what are some of the things that you would change or upgrade in Jamaica to make us even prouder to be Jamaican? Send me something. Send me something. Talk about some of my experiences traveling around the world as a Jamaican. Right? Two years ago, I moved to Berlin in September. I lived there for three months. And every time I'd wear my Jamaica jersey, or people would hear my accent. They would say, are you from Jamaica? And I'd say, yes. And I'd be treated so differently instantly. And they would ask me about Bob Marley, reggae music, Sean Paul, weed, Usain Bolt. And actually, the order was always Bob Marley, Usain Bolt, and Jamaica and weed. That's the three things I would first talk about and then go from there. So and that was interesting. Oh, so look at this. Hortense is saying she meant to say that she couldn't listen 
to, to reggae music from Rasta people in her house. And that is a common thing in, in a lot of older households in Jamaica, right? And Marlon is saying reggae was always played every Sunday evening on his dad's sound system. It was always a good time. So I love that. Big up to your father for, for promoting and supporting the culture that the rest of the world knows Jamaica for. That we as Jamaicans need to embrace our culture more. I look at Venice saying that she remembers she, them used to pay me money when I was little, <laughs> when I danced to the festival songs. I love it. I love it. This is no man. This is exciting. We're getting going down memory lane, going down memory lane. So, and Pauline asking me, Pauline asking, why them changed Jamaica? Well, I don't know. Have they changed Jamaica or is it just that uh, things change over time? I wouldn't say them. I wouldn't say there is a person or a group that changed Jamaica. Uh, things naturally change over time. And we, we want to see a different kind of change. We want to see an improved Jamaica. We want to see a Jamaica that embraces our culture that we are known for abroad uh, and invest in that culture is proud of all aspects of Jamaican heritage, uh, starting with the music. Uh, so, you know, here's, here's Carol saying, I like when I travel other parts of the world and I'm asked where I'm from and I say Jamaica. Uh, they would say Wagwan or curse a Jamaican bad word and smile. Yeah, man, we, we all have that experience as Jamaicans. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest, you know, the, the, the ones that we don't like, and we especially need to tell white Americans this, guys. Like, seriously, no, number one, we actually don't like the whole Jamaica have a bobsled team thing. <laughs> I know Cool Rodins is fun, and I did it in the video as, as a little inside joke, but we actually don't like doing that whole Jamaica have a bobsled team because we didn't say it that way. We, we don't talk like that. So, so that's one. And then anybody else, if you have other pet peeves, tell me. Tell me some pet peeves so we can share it with our, our viewers who are non-Jamaican about what we actually don't like doing and and i know we're going to get some i, I don't want to say all of them marlon was saying air jamaica was also an integral part of the nation and a source of pride wherever that brightly colored aircraft went and, and that is true air jamaica was a little piece of jamaica uh, that flew and it flew for a very very long time had uh, one of the best safety records in the entire world it had some of the most amazing service as well so it is a pity that it wasn't able to be run profitably that's unfortunate and you never know air jamaica might return but it, it is the way it is we we've learned from that most governments can't profitably run anything business-wise so uh, we have our differences on on that one but air jamaica definitely was a, a source of pride uh, barbara is here saying the people and the food <laughs> people everybody said that about jamaican people so warm and giving the people and the food when you're in Jamaica, you're feeling the love, man. I love it. One love. Yo, it's true. It's true. We know Jamaica for the food. Look at this. Okay, and say my friends here in California asked me, <laughs> I'm asking, asking them to take them to Jamaica. What stood out most though is when they told me that based on what they've heard, if and when I plan that trip, they don't want to experience the culture and not just stay within the resorts. They always ask him to talk patois. And that is important. I'm, I'm friends with Adam Stewart. So yes, you got to Sandals, the beaches, you got to your all-inclusive resorts, the Spanish ones, and so on. But leave, right? Adam has island roots. They, they take you out. You don't want to stay in that all-inclusive resort and only experience that. You need to be going outside and visit Dundra Falls and make sure you're getting out to Rick's Cafe in the grill. You, you want to really go to Portland as well. That's, that's my favorite spot. Uh, the Errol Flynn Marina is where I love to be. You've got to Boston jerk uh, and taste some real jerk pork over there. Or for those of you who don't eat pork, you can have the jerk chicken. But you want to experience as much of Jamaica as possible, as much of the people. And then you really should be building in a Wednesday night. You want to go to like a wedding, wedding Wednesdays. Obviously, we have COVID right now, so there's a problem there. But you need to go to an authentic Jamaican dance, and you need to go to an authentic Jamaican clash. Those are some of the things we want. Look at this way. Irie, you know, <laughs> call it Herb. <laughs> like, okay, everybody, you love them things. Look, look at Donovan saying, everywhere I go in the U.S., everybody wants to curse a bad word. And in Jamaica, <laughs> if, you, if you curse, they want to charge him for it. You don't understand. Well, I, 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 would, I would say that we need to be careful about the cursing part, we know is a bad word. So we shouldn't be saying it. Uh, Americans don't see it as a bad word or, or the European. So it's fine. I, I get that. That's something that's going to be iffy. Uh, we will see how this one going. Let's see. We're saying good to hear about Jamaican. I'm Jamaican. And one thing he doesn't understand in the US is why the Jamaican government charging us for the curse word thing. So again, uh, there's a time and place for everything. That's how I was raised. There's a time and place for everything. 
I actually haven't heard anybody being charged just on the street for cursing, right? Jamaican bad words. All, all these words end in cloths. But if you go on stage with, her, with the charging them, which I think at that point is stupid, though. Let's be honest. Uh, this is uh, an event for adults. So I think you're allowed to curse. Uh, you know going in that, that that's what's happening. I don't hear rappers in the U.S. getting in trouble for cursing. It doesn't happen in, in the U.K. either. So, oh, gosh. So you say you, you are going to drop the Millie Spars, My Boy Lollipop, one of the biggest songs ever come out of Jamaica. And so look at this one. Our heart say that I will not fly that other airline that has our doctor bird on it. You can't do that. The government owned piece of that in a man, like 19%. We need to support Caribbean Airlines. It, it is it literally we need to keep it afloat. There are Jamaicans who are who are being paid. It's Jamaican tax dollars helping to prop it up. That money gets spent in Jamaica. So we should be supporting Caribbean Airlines before any other airline because that money directly contributes to Jamaica. It doesn't come back out of the country like when we fly these others. So we begin up constant spring. I love this. Our trends in America and global jargon. You, you go to Toronto, you go to London, and hear some of the words they're using. It's Jamaican slang that they've taken. So, so let's be honest about that. Idris Elba, Idris, you'd swear Idris was Jamaican the way that it talks sometimes, right? So, how can we help bring more software outsourcing into Jamaica, similar to what India has done? So, I love that question because we are actually working on that right now. But the idea is, is number one, we can't follow the way that India did it, right? India spent a ton of money put into the, putting together their technical institutes, right? You just Google ITT in terms of the Indian technical colleges. And Jamaica cannot do that as quickly. It just doesn't happen, right? So they invested in their people, their education system, educating their people. The government had a policy geared towards that. And then they started uh, having, you know, opportunities come over. Uh, Jamaica is doing that on the call center side and now mu moving up the value chain, thankfully, chatbots and more. But we can't copy India. We can learn from India. Uh, the way I think it would be the smarter way is that uh, Jamaican investors should be investing in U.S. technology startups. And then when you invest in the company, whether you're on the board or you're an investor, you can now show them what is available back in the region and then encourage them to do business in Jamaica. That's what we're doing. We're investing in some companies here in the U.S., and they're doing. Uh, they're going to be outsourcing some of their marketing to Jamaica. They're outsourcing some of their accounting to Jamaica, and they're going to outsource some of their software development to Jamaica. The reason it makes sense to show them, you know, look at a school like, like NCU, Northern Caribbean University based in Mandeville. NCU over the last 11 years has, has either won or placed in the top three of the Microsoft Imagine Cup every year. I mean, this is, this is amazing. We have you know, UE, uh, UTEC, these, these universities are top class ranked in the top 5%. U.S. business school is in the top 5% of business schools in the whole world. And they're, they're winning or placing in the top 10 of the national, you know, international business model competitions. So uh, the people are there, but you cannot expect other people to, do, to know what is available in Jamaica and come and do business if you aren't showing them that. We promote Jamaica primarily for tourist destinations. Right, and only one kind of tourist, really. We don't even promote the food tourism that's coming, thankfully, you know, the gastronomy. And we don't promote the heritage tourism much. I know that is coming, I've been told as well, thankfully. We definitely end up promoting the cultural tourism, the music. You know, they do it around reggae, some fest. We have sun splashes coming as well. But we need to do more of that. But on the business side, these people are familiar with the brand already, they're familiar with the country. You know, we're the third largest English speaking country, natural English speaking country in the Western Hemisphere. We have a brand that's way bigger uh, than the country, uh, this island. And people know it. They're already doing business there with the BPO, uh, the call centers, and more that they're doing. But uh, Jamaicans also have to, to be less anti-foreign, right? Foreign direct investment. You should not be asking somebody to spend money in your country if you're not willing to spend money in their country or buy their products and services. Trade goes both ways. So that's the way I am approaching it. I like this. I'm saying the generic Caribbean accent. <laughs> It's not the Jamaican accent. We know that. We know that. We know that. There, there is a pet peeves. I want some pet peeves. Here's a pet peeve. That was a pet peeve. That, that, that this generic Caribbean ac accent. Of course, Marlon brings up medical tourism. People are already doing that going into to Mexico. And Jamaica presents a great opportunity for Canadians and especially Americans for medical tourism. Right? People in Britain, they all know Jamaican doctors and nurses, and they, they keep taking more from their how about coming here to us instead. I see Veronica saying that she wears she wears dread as a Jamaican and she's happy to see how people are embracing our culture. But growing up in my household, it was not embraced. It was shunned to an extent. And everyone now everyone is crazy promoting it. 
everywhere and and that is true that is that is just standard though, right that was the way it was think of the 1950s and 1960s how american parents were against rock and roll and they were against elvis presley well bob marley onwards is the same thing right there, there's always the generation before the parents oh that's not real music because right? i'm like that right now I, I hear some of the newest dance hall and and it doesn't appeal to me i i grew up with beanie man and bounty killer a uh, sean paul elephant man you know, ladies saw uh, Tanya Stevens. Like that's what I grew up hearing. So to me, that is real music. Today's dancehall is is something different and doesn't appeal to me. But it it has its place and it appeals to its audience. And we shouldn't decry it and downplay it. We should support it because there is clearly a target market for it. So uh, generational issues. Yeah. So we're going to go back on that one. Big up DC. We got DC in the building. Oh, look at this one. Kian said, <laughs> "Pet peeve is that they think our confidence." is being cocky. And we saw that happen to Usain Bolt when Usain Bolt ran, broke the record, beat his chest before he crossed the line. And and the IOC, right, the person in charge, actually complained about that. They accused him of being, of being boastful. And you know what? Self-confidence is not the same as being arrogant. If you know that you're good and you end up celebrating, there's nothing wrong with that. Other people do it. You look at when somebody dunk in basketball and how they celebrate. You look at touchdown celebrations after you score a touchdown. The celebrations when you score a goal in a World Cup. Come on. You are supposed to celebrate achievements. You're supposed to be happy. And Jamaicans are happier than most. We are a dancing culture. You see Bolt out there doing sweep, right? In, in dancing. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that is crucial. And people misunderstand our self-confidence for arrogance. Uh, but I'll admit, sometimes we Jamaicans need to humble ourselves a bit and help to lift up the rest of the Caribbean and not try to look like we are the Caribbean. But I want to see some more pet peeves. What's the best way to leverage Ban Jamaica to create opportunities? Well, you know what, first, Kian? We need to define Brand Jamaica. That's the first thing. You need to define Brand Jamaica. We have never defined it. Brand Jamaica means different things to different people. So we need to have one entity, which is a minister, ministry of culture. We have a ministry of culture, entertainment, sport, right? And, and gender. They need to define brand Jamaica. And then we can go from there. What are the components of this brand? You bring in marketing people who I, I did an MBA in marketing and international business. So you bring in the marketing people and say, what are our brand attributes? Who, who what are the, what's the target market? That we're going to go after or, or do we have segments right you want to segment your target market where are they how do we get to them what is important and then develop an actual plan and i would do a 10-year plan of how do you build that narrative around this brand jamaica and brand jamaica is big right it's, it's not just music it's not just food it's not just people it's not just sun sea sun and remember sex because hostel i got her groove back put everybody on the map about jamaica so we need to define it first, put a team in place after that, and then implement the plan. Uh, we're looking at community tourism should be marketed more as a way for small businesses to expand and keep the multiplier effect in the community. I love it. I love it. That's exactly right. I see Erica is on, on Instagram saying, yes, we are, David. Happy to collaborate. Marsha dropping, uh, uh, Marsha dropping a whole bunch of Jamaica flags on, on IG. Pam comes in and says, good day, everyone. Pam, where are you coming in from? You have to tell us, big up a, a, a town. Either where you come from in Jamaica, big up where you are now, big up your school. I want people to drop some big ups in here. Oh, look at this one. Red pea soup, patty, we have to eat. <laughs> your respect, fine. Go enjoy your lunchtime. Enjoy your food. A anybody else with some pet peeves? I want any, any other pet peeves, anything that makes you proud to be Jamaican. we, we got 20 minutes left. This is where I'm going. Erica is sitting here on Instagram saying, we have such a powerful brand and others are using it. And you know what? That came out. There was a report last week. I shared the article. Uh, it's actually on South Florida Caribbean News. that talks about uh, geographic branding, right? So you are able to file a geographic marker, a geographic identifier. So Blue Mountain, for example, is a protected mark. You can't have Blue Mountain coffee from anywhere else because it's only grown in Blue Mountain, which is in Jamaica. But Trinidad only has one geographic identifier. Jamaica has three, and Cuba has like a thousand. That's shocking. But that's why we have a Jamaican-style jerk when you go to certain restaurants in the United States, right? That That is Jamaican. Jerk is Jamaican, is invented in Jamaica. That should be something that is protected, right? 
<clears throat> what is what I like that your head is on. <laughs> big up, said cry. Big up, said cry. We've got Crucian, you know, said cry. Big up, of course, Paulie coming again. We got the Marley's in here, man. My father, Robert Nessa, said about the people, um, mm, peace and liberty make this world a better place. So this morning, I went to the pool, I lay down, I did some meditation. You know what I did? I was listening to Bob Marley. I just that's I tend to start my days listening to, to Bob Marley. And Jimmy Cliff, those two in particular, because it, it, it gets me to, to to meditate, to slow down, concentrate, and remember what am I supposed to put out in the world today? I'm supposed to put out positive energy into the world. Marsha is on Instagram saying, I'm absolutely so proud to be Jamaican. I'm gutted by how our brand is plastered all over without protection. And of course, Sham, I'm on our advisory board for our company. Look out for Sightseeing with Sandy. The third book is actually going to be set in Jamaica. Sorry for busting the secret, Sham. How can I get this coffee? You will get this coffee when I send you a bag of this coffee. Don't worry. You will get a bag in Texas. And she says she wants the real thing. So you're going to make sure you get the real thing. And in fact, they're going to get you. You're going to get some real Blue Mountain coffee from Wallenford, which is actually owned by my mentor, Michael Leachin. So we'll sort it out for you. Look at this, look at this. Michael said, Vegas, Vegas. I always get great information from you, David. I appreciate this, Michael. I, I just want to hear, I just want to share why I'm so passionate about Jamaica and in the wider Caribbean. Love my island, Jamaica. Bad, bad, bad. We love it, bad, we love it, bad, we love it, bad. And then, of course, Erica is over here. It's about darn time. We own it, protect it, market it proper, not just tourism, which I love. We all love tourism. And of course, Marsha is bigging up Shan, who is a fellow... Paul Carrick Brunson, tribe member, because they're doing their mastermind, and Paul is amazing. And of course, Paul is Jamaican as well. Big up, big up. So Sham is saying, you're not busting a secret. I got a surprise for you in that book, though. I can't wait to see the surprise. I'm so excited for, for this project that Sham is working on. And I will eventually post a, a clip one day of, of Sham. I was a judge on Paul Brunson's pitch competition, and, and so Sham was one of the people there. And I can't, I can't wait. Uh, here's Pam talking about Blue Mountain Coffee is the best. Blue Mountain Coffee is the best. Tell me some of the things that you buy from Jamaica, things that you love, brands that you love, products, like Grace Vienna sausage. I mean, tell me something else that, that you guys enjoy about Jamaica. What's something that, that you have on your shelf right now? So you say, oh, I have the book. My, my, actually, you can't see the book. See there? It's my wife's book. Isn't obviously it's not authentic recipes from Jamaica. Uh, yes, I did. I did stage it here for the show. <laughs> I, I don't have it there for my phone calls. But yes, give me some other things. You said I was not a judge. I was a master judge and guest. I love that one. You have a ton of like give give yourself more credit. Give yourself more credit. Oh man, no guys, thank you for tuning in all over. We've had some amazing people joining you giving some feedback we still have time 15 minutes <laughs> you miss birthday crackers <laughs> I, I love that angela you know what you need <laughs> oh look at this one they restricted those celebrations in the nba and nfs as, as well i don't agree with the restrictions yeah but that's why football is the best sport in the world right americans call it soccer football where you actually use your foot is the best sport in the whole world partially because of the celebrations as well uh, that's straight up and i yes i did play football as well so rum Appleton to be specific. Of course, Jamaicans all talk about Appleton rum. And it was National Rum Day the other day. So I went and had some rum. But you know, I did a, I did a poll on Twitter. 700 votes in four hours. Of course, Appleton won because I mainly have Jamaicans following me. So like 67% voted for Appleton. But I was actually told I need to taste some other rum out of Jamaica. So Blackwell rum is one. I do want to taste that. That's Chris Blackwell from you know, GoldenEye. And, and Island Records, Bob Marley fame. So I wanted this Blackwell rum. And then, of course, we, we have some other group, other others in Jamaica. So I, I'm going to be going on a rum tasting tour in Jamaica. Uh, Sandra Glasgow has promised me a bottle uh, to taste, and she can't, she, she's convinced that I will switch from Appleton to Worthy Park. So let us see where that goes. But I posted in there, Mount Gay from Barbados, and then I had, obviously, Eldorado from Guyana. And, and I had Bookman from Haiti. And of course, everybody else in the Caribbean was complaining. And Antigua was posting their rums. St. Lucia was posting, posting their rums. I mean, I, I started a rum war. So I got in trouble. Well, yes, I, I buy the stuff that might not be so healthy. Desserts like drops and such. What do you mean? Oh, gosh, no, you're making me hungry. I want some greater cake. Gizada, coconut drops, on the banana leaf. Yeah, man, th those are the things that we, we grew up with. Right? If, if you're a Jamaican who grew up in Jamaica, you know about Japs, you know about them things. 
what Marsha said. Listen, David, what of the other differences? The Dr. Bird, the ferns in Fern Gully, butterflies, bat in St. Thomas for the minerals. And we have three of those mineral bats in Jamaica as well. So uh, let's see where we're going. <laughs> All right, so I got somebody here, Esquire Broad, on, on Instagram said, I guess I'm doing rum tasting with you. <laughs> How many people want to go on a rum tasting tour with me in Jamaica? I think that would be awesome. I would do and say, yeah, man. Because like instant man say, yeah, man, rum tasting tour of the thing. So we're going to do a rum tasting tour. We can do some videos we post online. I'll tell you when we're going to be in Jamaica. You know what another one we should do? I want a jerk tasting tour. We've got scotches. We're going to go, obviously, Boston. We're going to go some more places to find the best jerk in Jamaica. Maybe this is a YouTube series. I would like this. That's fun. And then you know what else? What else, guys? What else we need to be tasted in Jamaica? Come on, give me some ideas. What else we should do? Look at one say, I will be here all day. You name it. Jerk, brown in season, level one grass team. I mean, all right. Cersei Tito. Every, Eric, Erica is asking me, when will it be? She ready for come on this rum tasting tour, you know, on Instagram. I don't know yet. Don't, don't we have like COVID still a keep, you know? COVID still a keep. Of course, Marshall is saying, what about, the, what about vegan? The buzz of today, organic foods. Obviously, Rastafarian has been doing natural food forever, which is now called vegan. So that's easy. Roast corn. Yes, we're going to have some roast corn. Erica, you're going JE soon. We'll coordinate. I'll make sure that you're there. Stay tuned. We will coordinate this thing. Okay, we got Errol Howard's in Naples by way of Brownstone. Big up, big up, big up. My sister actually went to Hilda, so I've spent quite a bit of time in Brownstone. What's your Mountain Peak Coffee? Excelsior Crackers. Jamaican Tasty Cheese. National Bun. Which bun? He's an HTB person. You know. Rare Navy Rum. I have the bottle over here. It's in the, in the kitchen. Red label wine, mm. mint tea, several Dutch pots straight from Jamaica, jackfruit and bami. Love my fish and bami and festival, especially out at Hellshire. Fort Clarence is nice as well. But well, you know what the nicest place is? Little Ochi in Sainty. Oh my goodness, Little Ochi. Wow, that's where you have to go. So, so we're going to do that. You know, I don't like jackfruit because I don't like how it smell. When you, when you open the jackfruit, oh gosh, <laughs> and of course, blue jars. Blue jars. <laughs> Original and best jerk in Boston and Port, Port, Boston and Portland, which, which is which is where I would go. Uh, we also need to not ignore marketing internally to Jamaicans. Hundred percent agree. Jamaican tourism industry should be able to fall back, and Jamaicans boost in the tourism industry, not just foreigners. Resorts and tourist spots need to be made more affordable and available to Jamaicans in Jamaica. Well, you say you know what I would say. I wouldn't say that it needs to be made more affordable to Jamaicans. We need to raise a per capita GDP in Jamaica. We need to raise median income by growing the economy so Jamaicans can afford to partake in what foreigners come down and partake in. Instead of lowering the price, which causes service to go down, you can't pay the people the same. You know what you need to do? Let's help these people to make more money. Let's have a more inclusive economy. Let's see GDP growth as finally positive. And it can be trickled down. It needs to be bottom up, right? By paying people more, uh, provided they, they do more productivity, they can spend more money within that local ecosystem, right? We don't have the population of a China or an India where they can depend on local investment and, and local consumer spending. But we do have enough that we could do something. So, of course, I'm saying you need to blend the track food, jackfruit. And Marsha agreed with that jackfruit, just yucky. You know what, Carlene? I, I agree. I understand that you need to blend the jackfruit. But from your cut it, I can't stand the smell. So I wouldn't even be alive to blend the jackfruit because I just go faint. Like I, anybody near is like me and don't, and don't like jackfruit. Oh, gosh, you mind saying, well, well, do other places make saltfish fritters? That's a good question. We have anybody from another island in here watching? Because I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know that one. But you know what? I know, I know there's some sort of fritters in, in Barbados because flying fish is their thing, man. And, and I've had some really good stuff. You mind say the cheese is like no other. Alaska, Alaska is almost that is true. Our cheese is 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 quite so. So all right, so all right, so so Rose I have a wicked idea. I'm not gonna lie. Rose uh, rum tasting island hopping. Rose, I like what you think. So so you want us to do a rum tour in Jamaica, and then we need to go hop to all the other islands and taste everybody else's rum. Right, it, it's, a, it's a private jet. I go. You need to do that, man. Jeez, I love this though. We're going to do a rum tasting island hopping. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Of course, you find Jamaicans are very very Finnish, Pam, and then. Uh, Marsha on, on Instagram is saying Devon House ice cream. I, I love that. I, I can see it right here. You know, Devon House ice cream, creamy, uh, run by a friend of mine. He's a chairman and CEO of the company. Uh, Chris went to University of Miami. We did our MBA together. And uh, they're actually our third largest holding in our portfolio in Blue Moho, in Blue Moho Capital's portfolio. So I'm, I love what Devon House ice cream is doing, what it tastes like. 
as far as I'm concerned, is how Warren Buffett has seized candy. That's how I look at Devon House ice cream. Turn up, turn up. So Shani is saying, do you know you could also blend or cook the jackfruit seeds? Yeah, I don't want to hear nothing about no more jackfruit. I'm not going to lie. I don't want to hear nothing. <laughs> I don't want to hear about just thinking about jackfruit make me feel sick. I'm not going to lie. Look at, oh gosh, Sawasop ice cream is Carlene's favorite. I have never tasted that. And we, we're not going to get into what I don't eat or what I eat. So, because I'm not going to lose my Jamaican card. But but let's just say, sauce up ice cream. I'm not tasting it, but enjoy that. En enjoy that one. We do have some really nice ice cream flavors, though, in Jamaica. But Marsha Grimish, you want nothing to do with jackfruit. So, here's what Pam's saying Pam's saying that Jamaicans are creative. We are, we are very creative. And I, I agree. So, jackfruit smells. That's what we keep saying. <laughs> jackfruit, get visa. So, all right, since we're on this, you guys are obsessed with jackfruit. Let me tell you when I realized how serious jackfruit was. I, I live 10 minutes from Disney. I live by Walt Disney World here in Orlando. And there's a tour in Epcot that talks about, you know, the future and, and so on. And so they have a tour. You're going in a little boat and you end up going through these greenhouses. You get to see how, how food can be grown in, in modern ways. And, you know, they have jackfruit in there. They talk about jackfruit and how nutritious it is. And I remember my wife and I were in there and we just like, What? We never know about jackfruit being that nutritious. Look at the Americans growing it in Disney, talking about it in Epcot. If you ever come to Walt Disney World, first of all, if you're coming to Orlando, you need to let me know because I'll go to Disney with you. I have an, I have an annual pass. Not right now, though. Please, do, please don't come here right now. But when things kind of ease up here in Florida and you come, I would love to go to Disney World with you. I do it all the time. And we can go check out the jackfruit. So, and Carlene said, big up what you're doing to promote Jamaica. Erica is saying, David, I was in Germany last September, had a taste of rum from some other islands. We do have something spectacular. So you know what you're going to do? You're going to make all the Ghanese people and the Barbadians run in uh, and the St. Lucians going to run in and talk about how much, how them rank in Ghana and Tigo. Like you're going, you're going to start a rum war again on my live stream. And I don't, I don't want that to happen. So please, man said barbecue jackfruit. It's quite popular among the vegans. Barbecue, barbecue jackfruit. Never hear that, and I'm not tasting it, but whoever has tasted barbecue jackfruit, you let me know. Ashani is saying, I'm missing out. You know what? I'm not missing out because I'm not smelling it. More good. Of course, Marsha is now bringing up our teas. <laughs> so Erica is saying, for me, David, the food thing, lover of Jamaican cuisine, but not everyone can cook it. We need a standard operating procedure to cook it proper. <laughs> I love it. Look at Deidre say She saw chef use jackfruit in replacement of meat in her taco. Vegan lifestyle. So, yeah, that makes sense. I am not vegan, though. So, good for them. Enjoy it. Vegans, check out the jackfruit. We've got more people in here. Hortense, you're talking about roast and boil the seeds, too. I cannot believe this topic is turning in, into jackfruit. That's what you're so proud of, Jamaica, is jackfruit, guys. Give me something else. Give me something else. <laughs> good. You, you love Devon House ice cream. Uh, ZZ, ZZ Palmer asked me, what's the topic? And topic scrolling on the bottom. Proud to be Jamaican. What makes you proud to be Jamaican? Share some things that you, you love about Jamaica. <laughs> so on. Pacific Islanders cook jackfruit as meats. Great. I cook meat as meats. Love it. But big up to the Pacific Islanders for making use of the jackfruit. You know, we should not, where does jackfruit come from? Because breadfruit is not from Jamaica. Captain Bly brought it to Jamaica. Actually, that's where Bath Fountain is. He, that's that's they have a, the first breadfruit tree in Jamaica was planted in Bath. Bet you didn't know that one. So where does jackfruit come from? Anybody? This person said they're not Jamaican, but always wanted to know how many dishes there are for Aki. Why we could stay here for a long time, you know, because I'm sure there are a lot of things you can do with Aki. Erica is saying that on, on Instagram, especially the jerks or someone in you know, someone like Walkers would can jump in. So man, we're putting together one hell of a tour. You know, music and the artist, that is true. And then tasty patties, but it's tasty with two E's though. Tasty patties. I'm a tasty patties person, not a juicy beef patties. Don't shoot me. You're allowed to be a juicy beef patties person. That's fine. You can be a mother's patty person. Carlene is on here saying she don't eat aki. I have no comment. No comment whatsoever. I, I love saltfish. I can tell you that. I have no comment. Carol is saying we need to pass on our culture to our children so it does not become extinct. I 100% agree with you. But you know what? I'm not worried about that. I honestly not worried about that. Carol, I think our culture is so strong. People, people know it. Marsha is saying on here that on Instagram, proud of how vibrant our people are, bold to stand up and stand out locally and internationally, unmatched in so many categories. 
And of course, Chris pops in Hellshire Fish and Festival, which is, is exactly what we spoke about. So here it is. Jackfruit came from the Pacific Islands, as far as I know. We're going to Google that one. Great answer. We're going to go and check it out. This this turned into jeopardy now. Four minutes left, guys. Send in some things. Big up some people. Yeah. Send greetings if you want to send greetings to somebody in Jamaica. I remember that. We used to send greetings. That was hilarious. Christmas time. So what is easy saying? What I love about Jamaicans, we show off. <laughs> oh, gosh, man. We bossy. We bossy. I love seeing one another wear our colors, our volume turn up, and we get the attention. And that's true. I can tell you a joke. I was talking about a man like Jamie Oliver making jerk rice. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. I'm proud of how resilient the Jamaican people are, is what Carlene is saying on Instagram. Uh, Erica is saying, this serves to advise that as of today, David and I started the Jamaican, Jamaican Global Marketing and Cultural Committee. <laughs> I love it. I love this. I can't believe this one. I think there's a board that we need to go and talk with. Greetings to all the teachers in Jamaica. Marley says on Instagram. So big up you guys. Hold on. Coconut dumplings? Do you like? Never even hear that. I'm not going to lie. I'm a fried dumpling guy. So we never have coconut dumpling yet. I would taste that though. I would taste that. Ashan is on Instagram talking about Kneesberry. Jamaicans tend to love their Kneesberry. And then sending greetings to the Bailey family in Clarendon. Big up the Bailey, fa Bailey family in Clarendon. Carlene on Instagram is sending greetings to you. I would like to send greetings to my family, the Baileys in Clarendon. Right? That's, that's how we used to do it. That's how we used to do it in Jamaica. Christmas time, we sit around the TV, which was JBC at that time. One TV station. And people would send greetings to their family. And that's how we got to see so many people in Canada, the US, the UK. Sometimes it was funny as well. Breadfruit, I thought, came on the South Coast. No, Bla Captain Bly. Captain Bly brought breadfruit. And what book is behind me is a Jamaican cookbook. So I'll, I'll show you the book afterwards. It's a Jamaican cookbook. I'm saying Bah Bahamas, banana dumpling is better. Okay, then. You mind them fight out? Wow. You guys fighting out the coconut dumpling still. But let me see. Greetings to my mom and dad who lives in Montego Bay. Woodstock family. Big up, big up, big up. What's your... <laughs> and then Elvis is reminding me that CVM was around in your days. Elvis, I was born in 1981. It started with JBC TV. I used to watch rapping. I used to watch Punch Nello Little Fellow. I watched uh, Lime Tree Lane. That's the stuff I was watching. I started with JBC TV, boss. Like, I, I don't care if I dated myself. 1981, my born. JBC TV. Punch Nello, rapping. No, Punch Nello was wicked. Like, let's admit, Punch Nello was wicked. Lime Tree Lane was, was funny. It was really funny. Come on, come on, Johnny. All right, what is this? I made the best Jamaican Christmas black cake in the Maryland, Virginia, and D.C. area. Hit me up. Yo, you see how Jamaicans bossy? We just said it. Jamaicans bossy. Literally, you're going to come on my show to tell the whole world that you made the best Jamaican Christmas black cake in the Maryland, Virginia, and D.C. area. ZZ, I need a piece of this because I need to test this. I need to confirm. So I'll, I'll send you my address. You're going to send me a piece, all right? Sweet potato dumplings. No, sweet potato pudding. Sweet potato pudding. My mother know when I show up at her house in Palm Beach, you better have some sweet potato pudding for me to eat and you better have some sweet potato pudding for me to carry home. That is what I want. I big up my mother and father, Pansy and Glenn. But where are they, Ken? They in, they in California with you? Where are they? Watch it, Erica said, David, with the same age, you look younger than me. Yeah, because, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I do that little skin regimen, man. And I play sports and swim. And I want to, I need to look young. You know, normally, I would shave off the gray hairs. But, you know, funny enough, my wife doesn't actually like me having the gray hairs. And she doesn't like the beard, right? It itches when you hug each other kind of thing. But what I said to her was, was very simple, you know. When I did the photo shoot for, for the magazine behind me, right, with, with, with Leech in, the inside cover has me with the gray hairs. And a friend of mine in Jamaica said, oh, wow, David, I like this picture. You look like the rich godfather. And they like the look. <laughs> so, so I said, okay, great. That's, that's, that's the look that, that I would want to have. That one makes sense to me. So uh, this was a lot of fun. So I'm going to keep it for now, right? When you're managing people's money, uh, that they tend to prefer that you you actually you look older. It's an advantage, I'll be honest. We're going back to JBC TV. We're wrapping up the show now. But we're bigging up JBT, JBC TV, radio stations or JBC and RGR, right? Alan Lewis in the morning, all these people. Big them up, big up, big up. Auntie Faye, Faye Ellington. Uh, so it's, it's easy to say more. Young, yeah, I'm young. I'm 39. I'll be 40 next month. Yes, I am young. You love the pudding. My people at Pam love the pudding. Oh my gosh, I used to love Lime Tree Lane. I know that. I know that. And they're coming up with an animated Lime Tree Lane soon. So stay tuned for that. 
friend of mine actually working on that one in Jamaica. Uh, stay tuned for it. I'm not saying any more. Your favorite is sweet potato pudding. So me and you can par Hortense. Just don't bring up jackfruit to me. I don't want to hear it again. This one's saying Hortense Palmer with the coconut. I don't want coconut. Old Harbor, St. Catherine. So, you, so your family probably know my family. That's where mom's family is right now. Uh, Matinami family is out in Old Harbor. That's that's where they're chilling. So big up, big up. I see David dropping in the thumbs up with the Jamaica flag. It is 2 o'clock, 1 hour. We're wrapping up the show now, guys. This has been so much fun. A trip down memory lane. I hope you guys are excited about uh, Jamaica and being Jamaicans or visiting Jamaica. So to sum up, we're supposed to do a rum tour in Jamaica. We need to do a jerk tour in Jamaica. And there's one that I personally want to do. I've offered it to a few friends of mine. I want to do a James Bond tour in Jamaica. I want to go to all the locations that have been featured in James Bond movies. So this is Dr. No. Uh, this is Live and Let Die, the, the crocodile scene. And, and they have other scenes as well. And then, of course, No Time to Die. So I want to do the James Bond tour, the rum tour. And we need to do a jerk tour. So let's let's link up in Jamaica. And let's coordinate, guys. Everybody stay safe. Remember, COVID still a keep, right? Tana ya yard, as I'm saying in Jamaica. Please be smart, be safe. You're going out the way you need to do. But you know, remember, we're doing this for us. Wear your mask. Take care of other people. Uh, be careful about traveling. If you have to travel, travel. If you want to go somewhere else that you think is safer, then go there. But please, please stay safe. Uh, and we've seen you know, and saying, in my time, it was Marie Grath, <laughs> Marie Grath done topping on the radio. She's 63. I'm going to ask that about, about those people. And then Marlon saying, we need an art tour. And that's true. Yeah, thanks to Kingston Creative, who now has a home in downtown Kingston. I, I sit on their board. Uh, we will have an art tour. They've been doing one now a year and a half. So I, I look forward to, to doing that, checking out the Institute of Jamaica, the National Museum. There's so much that we can be doing down there. Look at this one. <laughs> General Hospital is calling. <laughs> He'll respond to the inbox messages. Boy, you know what? Since it closes out, I want Jamaicans to just tell me, what 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 <laughs> what were your favorite shows daytime soap operas growing up in jamaica right because everybody had some <laughs> we're all watching something let's let's not lie so i'm not surprised that general hospital general hospital show up in here but yeah man big up respect my fellow countrymen it's easy again you, you put it on camera now in the videos recorded saying you have the best christmas cake christmas black cake in maryland virginia dc so we're all going to test it now and you better live up to it. You bet. You, you really, really better live up to it. So, love Jamaica. Love Jamaica. One love to everybody. Next week, Wednesday, same time, same place. I'm going to have a guest next week. It will be a surprise. I am so excited for this. I really appreciate everybody that was watching, everybody here involved between Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. You guys made this worth it, worth my time, worth the expense. I really appreciate this. You guys tuned in from all over the world. I mean, we even got the Middle East to tune in this time from Qatar. That, that, that is incredible. Truly appreciate it. David, respect, you know, love and appreciate me. I pre appreciate that. Marlon, everybody, this is fun. And I, I love doing this next week, same time, same place. We're going to do this and we're going, we're going to turn it up. Let's, let's get our guests on the next one. I really appreciate you guys. Everybody, please stay safe. Love to your families. A big up Jamaica. One love and keep making us proud. Mugan, later.